his sound from the planet. This one straight to a boy neck. You better press it, no connect. Left by a shield and a friend. And you P45 if you can it. <laughs> Fire red and dead, niggas. I'm your host, L, and this is Fire Red Station, the hottest on the planet. Wow. I'd like to take this time to welcome Roger Robbie to Fire Red Station. Peace and love. Could you tell the Fire Red family about how you got to where you are today? Okay, um, yeah, long story and short story. <laughs> LB, I get, I give it the LB version. But um, uh, let's see. Um, Chill Derek from the first time I was really now music was home. Yeah, mom and dad play music on a Sunday, cooking food, you know, having uh, battles to play the, the best songs. So you'd get to, uh, you'll, you'll be in tune, you know, it's like you'll see something going on and you do, your mind's occupied. And it's these things that, you know, um, help me to become where I am. But from there, I would say, um, school-wise, my first instrument was piano in, primary school and in between primary school and secondary school there was this place in Deptford called Academy. It wasn't, it wasn't a big place mm -hmm. but it had instruments. It had drums, it had bass, it had percussions, it had guitars and stuff like that and yeah that was a place that I used to visit. But I would say um, my musical, greatest musical is input would come from a group known as Saxon International, Saxon Studio, um, where I would say I found my musical teeth there because it was just like uh, Caribbean. To explain to people who don't really know about it, it's a PA system, homemade, um, customized boxes, customized mixers, customized amps, and the way we played was different. You know, it was the, uh, uh, from Jamaica. These things were were happening, but it evolved from Jamaica, and Caribbean, over here. And yeah, Saxon was a, a, a sound that I grew up on with with with, uh, with my copies, people like the, the DJs and the, the, the owners was Muslim and Dennis Rowe, and they kicked it off. Then you had the, the, the DJs, um, Papa Levi, Peter Kin, and there were some earlier ones actually called Coley that people didn't know about. Um, yeah, Rankin Coley, who was one of the first DJs in Saxon. Then you had the Sandys, the, the Rusties, the Tipper Iries, the Maxi Priests, the Ashesenia the Smiley Culture, Multi Blinds. Mrs. Irie, God knows, um, Double O, Mike McLean, God, it just goes on. There's, there's a whole heap of, you know what? Well, yeah. The serious list. Mm, serious long list. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then Dennis decided to build a studio in the eight, in the early 80s. And um, then time the Saturn's really, you know, making a name as a. Uh, big platform, you know, everybody wanted to, to sing on Saxon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, even people from all over, all over the world, you know what I mean, and Sugar Merchant, another one of the on Saxon from in the country, and, um, but then he decided to build a studio, you know, and obviously I loved music from before I met Saxon, you know, I, was, you know, I definitely loved music, the piano was my instrument, hence you see the piano right there, and, um, and he built a studio, and I, I still got to the dances. I, I, I went missing. <laughs> yeah. Then he's built it in his in his in his basement. Um, due to his mum. Praise Miss Rowe. As I praise my mum, I praise Miss Rowe. Yeah, because if she didn't allow him to have all these people in the yard, the Saxon probably and the studio and all that wouldn't go on. Yeah. So yes, Miss Rowe in the heavens is still there. Bless you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know? And yeah, it's, um, that's where I really cut my musical teeth, you know, in the sense of yeah, it was back then it was um, drum machines and keyboards and uh, 
I think the, the first thing we started off on was a Dr. Rhythm, and I can't remember the keyboard, the, the name of the keyboard, I think it was, may have been a Roland, but this drum machine was about the size of this, this um, interface box here. Wow. Yeah, and it was silver. Jammies, I mean, Jammies was one that kind of really used that, you know, kind of popularized it. They, the sleg thing was built off of it, some big tunes, you know what I mean? But yeah, we started with one of them and a reel to reel and a tape recorder and a microphone and an app, and a couple of leads and some boxes. Mm. You know what I mean? And how we make music is play, obviously, live, set the drum machines, you know, the way they say, set the drum machine, the program, intro, middle, and the end, you know get ready to play, set the, the, the reel to reel and boom, yeah, start playing, boom, 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 start playing. And then, yeah, so you wanna add some more instruments now. You'll play the music after you've recorded it and you're playing the drum machine. Then what you've recorded already, you'll play it again only. You'll be recording it on the tape deck so, and then playing again. So what you've played already, you'll be recording again onto the tape deck. So the real to reels playing, the tape that's recording, and you're playing again with what's being played, and you'll just be bouncing like that until you're you're happy with what you've got. Yeah. Harmonies and all them kind of things. So it was a holy boy at them time, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I didn't really have my time with musicians, not as I wanted to. So hence why I built a little small studio. You know what I mean? And, you know, get the, the, get the, the musicians around and get some vibes. How old was you when you started singing? Started singing, uh, I'd say 13, 14, yeah. How about, did, did, did that stem from school? Yeah, I played in front of, what's his name, uh, Prince Charles and, and his crew. And the crew. <laughs> <laughs> My first instrument was, you know, the little instrument with the um, the block and steel. That's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or the xylophone. If it was yeah. metal, yeah. if it was metal ones, the xylophone. The wooden ones, the block and steel. Yeah. And yeah, that was my first instrument. And yeah, I sang in a little choir for Prince Charles and I think the Royal Albert Hall somewhere. And it's me and a little bow tie. My mum's got that picture. I've never seen that picture. Yeah. <laughs> singing away with his luck and speed. And, yeah, that was, that was my first kind of stage show. <laughs> <laughs> live, live appearance. <laughs> yeah, group style, you know? Yeah. yeah. What was your first single? First single was actually, do you remember in the 80s there was um, the, the, the new crossfire? Yeah and the, um, the King's Cross disaster, yeah. as well as th in the same year or the year after that, there, there was a lot of bad weather where houses got licked down, trees got licked down, cars got turned over. I don't know if you remember this, but the it was a big all, storm, it was like a big hurricane. Storm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my first tune w was about those subjects mm. and actually Miss Rowe. Dennis Rose, Mark with the Runner, built the, the um, Saxon Studio of Work with someone where my first tracks came from. It was okay. the Saxon Studio of Dennis. Yeah, she was involved in that, that song there, so that was my first song. Um, then, then uh, Oh Lord, then I believe it was more love after that, or It's Another Day. My memory does not serve me. Dennis will tell you more about that. It was either More Love or It's Another Day. Okay. But this, uh, this, the track Disaster was the was my first track. And then it brought me to the studio and, and that, I actually built that track myself. We made paid to build that track myself. Because it's Christmas, it's actually the same music on both sides, two different songs. One's called Because It's Christmas, the other one's called Disaster. Okay. What was your first LP? First LP would be um, Reflections. Yeah, yeah Reflection was done by uh, Love Injection when I, when I um, started working with 
Love Injection Records, mm. Spider Ranks. I got taken to Jamaica in uh, 93. I got a thing now. I'm thinking like it's around 93. Yeah, went yeah. to like, Jamaica 93 for eight weeks. Mm. I was working in a, a studio called Mixing, Mixing Lab. Roy. Um, and that's, that's, that's when my first album was done. I was working with Sly Robbie. Chris, uh, Christopher Murdy, Robert Lynn, uh, Dean Fraser, yeah, holy good different musicians, uh, speckled, speckled, uh, holy different musicians. How did you feel making music into it? I was in my own home. I was in my own I mean, it's experience, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's like going anywhere and working in, in, um, with in a different environment, mm -hmm. only you're going to somewhere with your parents, but, you know, and then uh, where yeah, well, you're known as English. Where well, I'm known as English, the British! <laughs> British, where I said? <laughs> you're trying to blend in, you're trying to blend exactly. in. I mean, I, I'm not being funny, I, I, I switch. Okay. I, I, I do switch and I, I have been like that, but I realize that for people to really understand you, you was big in it, so you gotta you gotta keep them the language that has conquered 75, 80 percent of the world. Yeah. Done so people understand that. Yeah. So I do switch sometimes going out to me and kind of, yeah. and I tell you when I went first went over there, my thought I was hiding. Okay, and I say, yeah. yo, spider, you sure you sure the wider? Yeah, you sure coming to my water, but don't you know? It was good. It was brilliant. Yeah, I was in my hall. Yeah. And then we went back to 93. Mm. It took me to Jamaica four years concurrently. So 93, 94, 95 and 96. Okay. And we was all doing music every time. We went there. Nice. And for that length of time each time? For that, no. Um, first week was... No, it wasn't that long. Yeah, so you're lucky. The first, the first year, ninety three, was eight weeks. Yeah. Second year was six weeks. I believe this third year was another six weeks. And then you see this fourth year, I got left there over half a year. Ooh. But yeah. that project was done in Ochi a studio with, in conjunction with Carry On Records, Clive Hunt, Carry On. Um, Carl James was one of the producers on the album. There, I spent, I spent just over six months in in Jamaica. Wow. My mum didn't like it at all. Didn't like it. My mum was happy. I know she wasn't happy, mate. She sent my brother to come get me. Really? Yeah. I was taking too long. <laughs> <laughs> my How was was, you then? Huh? How was she then? Still quite young, right? I was still quite young. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was. Yeah. I was a, a, a bit a lot greener. And I, uh, uh, I think I was braiding them. Yeah. I didn't even lock. I wasn't even lost. Then I was, I was just no. In fact, that year I was still trimming. I think it was the year after or the year after that I started braiding. Mm. And then one year I went there. That was the year. That the last year. The last year I think it was the year that I started locking up. Had to be. Yeah, it had to be, man. Or the second to last year, because I came back and well, my mum wasn't talking for about two months straight. <laughs> wasn't good if no, it wasn't good. But it's an old bit. Best of friend! Yeah. Yeah, we are we're hiring. We're hiring all. What was your family or friends' feelings about your choice of career? That's a good one! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ma! Alright, okay, yeah. That's a simple one as well. You know that like you get mixed blessings? Yeah. When you get mixed feelings. And obviously, mum was, was one of them. My dad was one of them as well. But uh, I can honestly say, after the fact of 10, 15 years, of me being a name of every time because I'll be straight he, 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 even throughout my, my, my the whole time in the career in my career I've done nine till five like everybody else you understand mm -hmm. you know what I mean we keep it real like that one time I tell you music don't 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 
feed me like that, you understand? You mm. know, uh, the, the technicalities when it comes to royalties that up to this day, so you, know, you understand? But, you know, I'm still living and I, we still hope for the best, you know what I mean? We're still looking into them, them factors. But yeah, they, I, I definitely had mixed feelings on in cousins, you know, a lot of people did encourage, you know, my brother, my brothers were my greatest supporters, you know, Dean, Dean, my brother, Peter, then I was driver, and um, my sister, you know, but it's obviously, you know, you're gonna get it, because people know the business, it's a cutthroat thing, mm. literally. They did that literally is cut from, but we're still hearing it. And mum always said, if you're born to drown, you can't hang. You see me? So it's one or the other. Yeah, it sounds rough, but it's good meaning. It? Yeah. yeah. The Jamaicans say it a, a lot more stylish than that. But I, I just said it like that because it is, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. early, but yeah. Yeah, mixed feelings, mixed feelings, sister. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Who or what inspired you to write? Life. Life. Obviously, music is music, and you, you see music for what it is, and obviously, when you, you listen to it, you say, boy, it's somebody written, there's music to it and stuff, but what, what you encounter north, south, east, west. Up there and below, you know, um, everything that you, you, you can in your life can inspire you. Mm. You may get inspired by a record, you may get inspired by a life experience. For me, it's a lot of a life experience. But then sometimes I'll just go in the heavens and, alright, take it slow, for instance. Mm. There's a song called Take It Slow that I've done for Joel Fraser and uh, Lloyd Campbell. I can't, can't stand it really. Uh, and when that track came to me, it's one of them tracks where you say, What am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with it? So, I've got some vegetation. Went on a, 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 a veranda, around a table, and sat with a cassette and Walkman. Little drink, a pen and paper. Mm. I must have listened to tune about 30, 40 odd times. I came up with Take It Slow. Asked me if I was, me if I was happy with this song when I finished it. Was he? No! Oh. <laughs> no, 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 no. I said, you know what? And I was looking for something else, something else. I said, you know what? Yeah, find nothing else. Mr. Campbell, yeah, I said, can't work. And I said, I'm a big tune, and I wasn't born when he was telling me it's a big tune. I said, mm. Jason Sturgeon, he's the one that took the vocals, and um, Fiona was, was the one that done the backing vocals, yeah, yeah. the team at the time. And uh, yeah, man, I wasn't feeling this track at all, sister. <laughs> nah, <sighs> going that way. You see, by the time he'd done that, and done, done what he was doing with it. Let me tell you, it's one of the biggest, besides my more love, it, it's, I get, still get dubs for that tune to this day. Mm. Take it slow. We'll yeah, take it slow mm -hmm. to concentrate. Mm -hmm. And some of them are, we'll kill them slow. And I don't like killing nobody, you know, but it's, uh, we have life killing yeah. someone. Yeah. Or don't worry people, we're not killing, we're not taking life, we're just taking some boys titles. Yeah. So when they were alive, they're alive. When you when you play at that plate and kill them, they're dead. Yeah. That's what we need. We don't, we don't kill them literally. Okay, we love life, we, we promote life every time. Okay? Yeah, man. Why so. is music important to you? I've seen, not just myself, but I've seen what music does for people. It's educational, it's inspirational, it's therapeutic. 
as well as this in general. Mm -hmm. you know, it helps people in bereavement. Uh, it does a lot of things. It's untold of you. I mean, I've got a friend passed away. He was one of my biggest fans as well. Tony Brom. Tony Brom. Rest in peace and rise in glory, my brother. Mm -hmm. But um, it's a man that he was feeling me on a spiritual level because a lot of people say, boy, a lot of these songs that you do a lot, a lot on a spiritual level. But at the end of the day, you know, um, what you get is what you get. You know, is reality as well as spirituality. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, the two is blended in. And yeah, he's been to, well, the first couple of sessions he's been to, um, it was in a park, I was doing a park down in Burgess Park, I believe, doing a session down in Burgess Park, and it was a live thing. Um, and I think that I, I was doing a PA, but there was some there was some live acts there, but I was going for a PA. And uh, I managed to do a little in, interlude with, because I played, mm. I played a friend in need, um, so I could rock with a friend in need, and, and he was there, boom. Yeah, he, he told me years later that he was busted, he was in tears. Oh, really? Yeah, and this guy is like a, a giant. <laughs> I mean, a giant, but a gentle giant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do anything for you. Um, it was, they made a movie about it. They called it, um, the, the name. It, it fell with me at the moment. Okay. But, yeah, like the, the Catford. Something can happen, but they made a, mu a movie about it. Okay. Yeah, it was a very nice guy, man. Done, tried a lot of things, helped a lot of business in the area. You know, I come from a, 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 a rough background. Yeah, but switched it. Mm. You know, turned his life around, and sa saved, you know, found Christianity and that. But yeah, he was one of my good supporters, you know what I mean? And yeah, when you ask me what music does for you, then that's the power it does. Been to Germany, done a few shows, and I'm going through the car park and I'm leaving. And this woman's coming up behind me, I've got the security behind me, and I'm walking, and this woman's like, she's rushed, and the security's like, rushed her, and I'm turning around, and I see the commotion, I said, yo! I realize it's like the, the supporter. Mm. So I said, ah, lower, lower. And she's coming up to me, crying her eyes out. Saying, I know what you're trying to do, I know I can see what you're trying to do, and thank you, and we 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 what can I do? You know what I mean? Done a show with Ija Man Levi in, in, in which, uh, um, Eracuti, Cosmo, this man that, the, uh, 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 Rasta, mm -hmm. used to run Simba, he took me on a a show to Africa to support Ija Man Levi. Next thing again, it, it, it was me thinking that nobody don't know me in Africa. But, you know, I took, wait. I took a CD over there with eight tunes, sang all of them. You see, I look over the stage, it's a soldier that had to save me. I was getting pulled like this, Roja, Roja, go, take picture, picture, boom, boom, boom. Before that picture was click like that, a man dragging me again, and I'm, 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 the soldier said, the soldier just looked at me and just went over to me and just grabbed me like that before somebody else come and said they wanted another picture. Walked me to the minibus. <coughs> Big pardon. Walked me to the minibus, opened the door, pushed me inside, slammed the door, and I sat down and I was like this with my hand in my head, my locks over my head like that. And the, the van was rocking. And and when I look to the side, because there's no, it's not wasn't a block out thing. I look to the window, I just see hands on the window like that, and like, wow, yeah. So, and that time my heart's going like this, brother, sister. See, so you know, when you say the power of music, and yeah. I ain't nobody like that. I'm just singing to, singing for the people's sake, man. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's the power of music. You know. What have been your influences during your journey as an artist? Influences? Well, that's another good one. Because you get inspiration from family peers, 
you know. But if you're talking specifically um, when it comes to people in the industry, then there's a word. There's a word. I mean, all the people that like, you might listen to us as, as a child. Mm. I believe what you listen to growing up in your years, learning yourself. Mm. Is, is, is what sets you, you know, depending on what you focus on in that time. You're the ways, well, after you're grown and stuff, you're the ways uh, warm to new stuff. But what... Yeah, it's got a root. Yeah, what, what roots you from. So, all the, 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 from the time I joined, I joined Saxon young, mm. you know. So I'd say all the music that I heard around Saxon, uh, I spent a lot of time there, man. I mean, I was out. My mum had a button. I used to climb out my back window and scuttle down a drain pipe, walk to the end of my garden, scuttle up the hill. There was a hill that led to an alleyway. And I'd go down the alleyway and be down Boys Club or Childers Tree or Muncha or wherever it was and face the music when I reach in. It was a bell or something. But it was a regular appearance and a regular common assault. You see? Yeah. I'm surprised so, you still had the same route. Huh? I'm surprised you still had the same route. Well, the, the window got nailed up after <laughs> the, the, the window got nailed up, and I think grease was put on the drain pipe. So if I tried that, I'd just be broken my neck. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, get me alone. <laughs> there you go. Do you believe in the most hack? I believe in the universe, yeah, which is the most high. And how does this affect your work? In every single aspect of my life, in mm. every way you can imagine. Mm. Before I move, I forget you know, acknowledge the most high and ask for a, a clear path. Mm. You know, see if God all time coming in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. Please tell the Fire Red family where your music has taken you. Fire Red! Fire Red! Where's the, where's it taking me? Yeah. Um, physically or on a, on a mental level? Both. Okay, well it's taken me everywhere I wanted to go as far as to this point. And where it's taken me, the journey still carries on. Know, but for everything good and for everything bad, I give thanks for it. But guess what? I'm sitting here and I'm talking to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, where there's life, there's hope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so you're going to tell me some of the places you've been to then? Some of the places I've been to? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, France was my first. You can believe it or not, France. Made a song about that when I come. I always remember first time I flew way above the cloudy skies. It was so new, the clouds were grey and blue, and the sun shone clear in my eyes. No, I don't. Kick me when I wrote that. <laughs> but yeah, France. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? <laughs> um, yeah, France. Uh, France. Not touched China yet. Not touched. I don't, to be quite honest. I don't think I'd ever go to Australia. I don't know. But I do watch a bit of TV, you know. And, yeah. Um, yeah. The border control, man. They're heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Poor Chinese man can't even come in with his food. And, and they're always giving them a hard time. But they don't have to deal with them a hard time like that. They can deal with them a little bit better. Better than that. Cause man. I tip a done it, I don't know. Tip up, but I rate you though. You know? So yeah, Jamaica, America, France, um, Germany, down a tour with Rebel MC. We nearly got locked up. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny! I, I tell that story all the time. We was hungry. The man was hungry and we went to McDonald's. It was at 9, I think. 
two, three, four day tour. DJ Ron, Rebel MC, Tenor Fly, myself, and a couple of other acts. Uh, Rebel MC brought us as a package. We went to a fast food place, I can't remember the name of it. The men and were closing up. We're there. The door's locked. Why did you open the door? Anyway, the man them opened the door and somebody must have pushed, a finger got jammed in the door before you know it. The door was pushed open. I see people flying over the counter like, this is, this is like, I don't, I'm just working everything like this. And the road manager, before I knew I saw the road man, and she's a woman by the way. Yeah. She was on the floor with her hands behind her back. I said, no, please, no, no, no. But now we're all right, still in my so these, these, these are exciting things, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know, I know, it's funny, it's funny, man. Which brings me to our next question, <laughs> which shows or performances were memorable to you? Oh, crikey, well, that was definitely <laughs> one of them. Oh, oh crikey, there's been some shows, man. There's been some shows. You know, you, you, you can't say you've done it until certain things have happened to you. Mm. And I've been in my elements, you know. Made a step on, made a step on a stage that was no more than that high. Yeah. Can you imagine what happened? Mm -hmm. Did you miss the step? Miss. Oh. Miss it, but I didn't drop. Didn't drop. Miss, but you. When you see a trip, yeah. You see a trip, yeah. I mean, look, everybody's done it. Done it. Done it. For the greatest. Everybody's done something like that. It's and like I mean, a it. Yeah, so there's there's shows that are mem memorable in different ways. You know what I mean? There's some in good ways and some in bad ways, some in good and bad ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, Ray Goodman and Brown have done shows in America with Ray Goodman and Brown and Mighty Sparrow. Uh, these are acts from back in the days, but like um, you know, Gloria Providence mm -hmm. and the people there like mm -hmm. the time. You know, uh, okay, here's one, here's a memorable one. Brother, this is my little brother D. This week getting bigger. I know it wasn't your fault, but I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you this one, right? <laughs> I was in Stockholm, not Stockholm, Eidenhofen. Yeah, Eidenhofen. And uh, I was with my friend Russ Fire. And he's a he's an artist out there himself. Anyway, I had a show to do back in here in England mm -hmm. in Astoria with the great GI himself. Now the more them get, more them wow. Mr. Night Nurse with Gregory Eyes at Night Nurse. See? Anyway, my brother was with a pit man. My little brother was with a pit man. Found him. I said, yo, got the show. Make sure you're coming, I'm coming in, blah, 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 blah. Make sure you're there, no. Very, very, remember, it's big rise, man, a big show. Well, obviously, I should have come in the day before. Anyway, cut long story short. I've come, I've left my bedroom, come to Stanston now. Wait, you see him coming. Yeah, see him coming. Here, man. 15, 20 minutes. I still got time. Still got time. Man. He's just, he's just probably looking in the parking space. He'll come around the corner any minute. Half an hour. Yo, brother, are you there? Was it today, bro? So you are. Are you crazy? All right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Cut long story short. I reached to Astoria. I've changed in the car. Yeah? Wipes and everything, I'm saying, I can't miss this, you mad, great, we eyes and you great, grow with great, we all crazy! Yeah. No, as I've got in the story, I'm, it's kind of big. People see me, yo, want to talk to me, they want to talk to me, stop, stop, stop. By the time I reach round, I go round like that, round the back of the stage, this is the stage, yeah. this is the entrance, I've gone round the club, the story is big. I reach to the side of the stage. All you heard is, Are you ready? Gregory's gone on stage, isn't it? I'm looking at Gregory now. I'm just looking at me now. Like so there's a memorable one if you want another memorable one. That's a sad memorable one as well. You know what I mean? So, yeah. 
struggles a recording artist may face. a lot of things and they face stigma as well as you know um, getting the first foot in you know uh, anybody's trying you don't really you don't it's not really know it's going to struggle unless you've got somebody to vouch for it i was lucky in that aspect mm -hmm. i was going to go around music in it so artists can you know musicians and singer songwriters they they, 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 they can face a, hot, a great deal in this thing. But what keeps them going is the drive, innit? Mm. And I mean, if they know that they've got something to do, something to say, and positivity to release and share, which is beneficial, actual, to a community and as an, on a global level, even. You know what I mean? They, 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 that drive is going to keep them going no matter what obstacle comes in the way. You know what I'm saying? What struggles have you faced? Uh -huh. I don't know. Well. I'm smiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, say, they say, boy, a lot of things, a lot of things that happen to you can only make you strong. And yeah, I can say I've, I've faced a lot of struggle. Once upon a time, they, used, they probably said I sounded like somebody, <laughs> but they can't say it anymore. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, um, yeah, you can, you can face a few. As far as I'm concerned, when they come and they're, 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 they'll always be there. Mm. You know what I mean? They'll always be there, so I'll always be ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you could give advice to an aspiring artist, what would it be? Believe in yourself. Believe. Don't let anybody tell you what you can do from what you can't do. You know what you can do. Yeah? Because there's a lot of people them that when you ask, you get the wrong advice because at the end of the day, when you're asking that question to them, they're not really, t they're taking it in on a 50% level. That means that they're hearing it, but they're not really hearing it. Yeah. So the answer that you're getting from them is not going to be the, the actual answer that is really should be given from even themselves because they're not listening to properly, are they? So don't let nobody tell you what you can do from what you can't do. You know what you can do. It's an advice all day long. It's up to you how much you want to take of it. Mm. Read between the lines as well, man. Mm. Read between the lines. Often there's messages. But when people are trying to tell you something, what they're really trying to tell you is you read between the lines and then you get the truth. And I mean, yeah. What artists do you listen to? I listen to all of them. Any specific genres? Yeah, I mean, from 60s, 70s, 80s, right up, you know, I mean, it starts from Eddie Grant, James Brown, you know, these, 
these 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 big sh shooters. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not King Cole, not Lee Cole. You know, um, Jacksons. I'm saying Jacksons. You know, mm -hmm. always I'm saying Jacksons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not my team. Yeah. <laughs> Even though there's one that people keep repressing nowadays, I like, it's doing, it's been doing things for the last God knows how long. It yeah. just gets repressed one more chance. Yeah. That's uh, so what get that kind of refund, mm. fusion thing. You know? Yeah. It's been going on the right. Has the response from the UK music supporters surprised you? is good when it comes to supporting them like that, you know what I mean? But yeah, because at the end of the day, encouragement sweet the labour, innit? Mm -hmm. And you don't you don't always know when you're doing good things, innit? So you know, when you when it's like alright, see the lockdown, 2020, yeah. we were talking about I done it myself, I done a virtual thing with uh Colin Media and, and, and uh, a true identity mm -hmm. with all people on New Year's Eve I think it was. And the people are saying that in, they were doing a lot of the, the virtual stuff and you know because they couldn't go out yeah right so well i'm saying live interaction is where it's at definitely that's all good and well but you get that energy when people so when you know that like what you're saying boy you know what i mean people do acknowledge you, you know what yeah. I mean? They say you listen to my music, I say I say I say without people like the I them, I wouldn't be nothing. Yeah. I'd just be a thing who's to making tunes. Yeah. Like everybody else. Yeah. You with me? It's people them that acknowledge you. That make you identify. That make you identify and become whatsoever. Mm. You know what I mean? So down to the smallest. When somebody says, boy, I've been listening to your music, don't think I say, oh, yeah, yeah. no, nah, I'm acknowledging you about more than you think. Yeah? Mm. Imagine you go to a concert and there's nobody to play. When the music's beating out, it's going to echo all over the place because there's no damn dampening, there's nobody there to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They acknowledge you. And <laughs> you're going to sing, this, when you're singing, it's like rehearsal. Yeah. A few people in the corner and you're rehearsing, innit? Yeah. So, the universe bless the people. The universe will bless the supporters them from our boat. The ones I know and the ones in my car see and I probably would never see in my time. The silent listeners we love you to the max. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> love that. Can you share with the Firewood family what plans you have in the pipeline? Working with youngsters, ones that are coming up. That's what gets me off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to know that I can do something for somebody like when I was young, people had time for me, kind of. You know what I mean? Uh, those, those little spots that I said, Yeah, boy, it's my little singer, you know. Like Dennis would say, Yeah, it's my little singer, you know, with some studio time now. You say, Yeah. You know, those people that actually gave me that blight, took them, gave them a day or two in the studio. Maximum respect to you because are you the biggest artist that you see in front of you now? If you didn't give me that time, I wouldn't be I would never been able to make all these tunes. I'd be making tunes right now, so respect. So, following that question, if there are any listeners out there that want to get, get in contact with you, how can they get in contact with you? Facebook, Twitter, social media. What do you want to do? Please feel free to make a shout out to your family and well wishes. Family and well wishes. Yes! Okay! <laughs> um, yeah, no. Respect to all the people in fraternity that I've worked with. Um, the Fraser family. We lost Lloyd a couple of years ago. That's, that's Lloyd Campbell, Joe Fraser label. He's responsible for the album, Take It Slow. And uh, Justice, he passed away just, just after Justice. All, of, all my family and friends that 
up to this day I might not even know but they're supporting. Yeah. Time is longer than rope. And we're having our heart. And all the people them that are looking. Keep strong and give thanks. Yes! This is Fire Red Station, the hottest on the planet. Furnace, lava. You know why? For you see the people of today Some are better off in many ways Some are living rich for lives Whoa. But some have to work to survive Fire has got more love, yeah The caring, the sharing, caring, sharing all the time They got more love Thank you you just took me back to night news then. Nations, should I say? Oh, nations! <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Know. It, it, oh, yeah. mm. it has been an amazing honor interviewing you. We'd like to thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank you as well. Encouragement, sweet labor. Yeah, man, with that, on that note, love to all the Fire Red family and the Global Massive. I'll leave you with one for my friend. Okay. Um, <laughs> his name's Gary Barracks. We call him Heavy. Yeah. He didn't get credited for this song, but he actually wrote it. We co wrote it. So there's some mistake in the printing press where the producer's name got put on the, <laughs> put on the, writer's, in the writer's position. But okay. it's a song that um, he wrote. And, um, or something, something like this. Has anyone ever told your fire red station are the baddest thing on the nation? It seems to me that there are so many ways to change the life that we're living each day. It's up to us to write our own story yes, and stop Living the life of the next man's history yes. We believe in so much Yet we know nothing at all yeah, yes. And put our hopes in false gods Who are corrupting the system It's time to stop this believing And begin to start with the knowing So I'll walk and I'll talk with all nations For people are me Rebel against ignorance here and now Fire it, what's it gonna be? Rabbit love it to the maximum